Our founder, uh, the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, had a very far-reaching and very ambitious vision that dictated that in order for us to have a, a good quality of life here in the Emirates, it is vital that the environmental, social and economic factors are all considered at the same time. Sheikh Zayed, the first president of the United Arab Emirates, understood the importance of preserving the region's environment. Life in the United Arab Emirates has always required people living here to share. The dry-aired climate, the scarcity of fresh water, and the nomadic tradition in concert made communal life a requirement. Everyone had to share. Mohammed Khalfan Zahiri is an Emirati elder. <laughs> So this culture of fearing is very much embedded in our upbringing from when we were kids. Uh, and the same will apply to my father and the same will apply to my grandfather. Ajidi, the Abu Dhabi Global Environmental Data Initiative, facilitates data sharing locally and within the region. It takes a very traditional path for sharing information and takes it and transitions it into a modern society and makes use of the best available technology that is out there. Ajidi to me is making data accessible uh, and easily understood by the people who need it. So it's about empowered decision makers, it's about people who have the tools now to make decisions for the future. In the Environmental Sustainability Index, the UAE was ranked uh, second to last. We found that the major problem was the, the quality of the data. AGD launched at the World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg in 2002. So we got direction from His Highness the Crown Prince that we need to come up with something which will start to work on bridging the gap between uh, developed and developing countries when it comes to environmental data. The then Crown Prince and current UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, believed that a GD could serve as that bridge. So we identify the data that's required to close the data gap, and that's the data that's required to undertake environmental mo monitoring, environmental management, policy and decision making. Ajidi began by collating data in Abu Dhabi, producing reports highlighting that critical work. So we really started on the Abu Dhabi and national level, many of our projects, when I first came. And the first ones were the sector papers. It was the first time for the UAE that we were able to see that we compiled all the information that we knew from all the experts within Abu Dhabi. And the idea was working with these experts, first of all we will collect the available data, two we will get their knowledge to analyze that. and come up with a first step towards the state of the environment. Nine thematic topics that ran from biodiversity all the way to water resources. Covering the entire scope of life in Abu Dhabi, the sector papers formed the foundation of Ajidi's initial work. The major challenge was to convince the uh, different parties to start working together and sharing their data. And that's actually what Ajidi was set to deal with. Uh, making your data available to other partners. Getting stakeholders to share and talk to one another is one of Ajidi's key contributions. This is where deeper and meaningful cooperation begins. The sector papers were a foundation uh, collation of data um, that then could be used by all of the agencies and organizations that have environmental mandates. The sector papers became the foundation for additional AGD products. 
the State of the Environment was able to highlight some of the environmental priorities. And more importantly, it was able to highlight the environmental priorities based on environmental data that was locally collected. It was the first of its kind for the GCC and it proved that the State of Environment reporting model could be applied to this region, to an arid environment, um, and we were able to set a benchmark for those within the region that were hoping to do the same. A GDS catalyst has changed the way people work. It establishes relationships that then can move forward, that they can share data, that they know what data is made redundant, and that they can collaborate in the future, and there's a, a basis of trust. The AGD Geoportal makes Abu Dhabi's environmental data available to any user online. It is one way of sharing uh, the knowledge because instead of one mind, teaching it to the others. It's one database. People can access it. To me, Ajali is like um, an, an e-grandfather, so, um, or a database where I have many of my grandfathers uh, that uh, will tell you, you know, in point X, you've got an incredible fisheries area that, I don't know, the Hamur breeds. The local affiliate of the World Wildlife Fund the Emirates Wildlife Society is a strategic partner. The Ministry of Environment and Water is chairing the initiative. The project was set up to help the UAE understand its consumption patterns of natural resources. So the ecological footprint is basically a measure of how much natural resources the UAE consumes, uh, like food, fiber, energy, timber, everything we need to live the lives that we do in this country. And Per capita, the UAE has amongst the highest per capita footprints in the world. We're in a country which has developed extremely rapidly, so you see a lot of construction, development. It's a hot place in the summer. You can get towards 50 degrees heat with really high humidity. So you do need to stay indoors where it can be cool. So your consumption of energy, it can be quite high. Using extensive data and a deep understanding of the region's environment and terrain, Ajidi published the Environmental Atlas of Abu Dhabi. And that really shows what's most unique and special about the environment of Abu Dhabi. It brings people an understanding of what's out there that might not necessarily be able to go out to the desert or to the dunes or to the wadis and to the coastline. Ajidi has now published an interactive edition of the Atlas online. And it shows it in a very graphically pleasing way, so it gives education to the general public. So that's quite exciting. AGD is currently conducting rapid assessments of the environment throughout the region. One on climate change, one on water, and one on biodiversity. And that's quite exciting because it's bringing partners together to create the scope of these projects. Awesome, awesome. For the past 20 years, climate change has been on the policy agenda because there has been growing evidence that temperatures are increasing, sea levels are rising, and that is producing substantial effects upon the way that we grow our food, the way that we think about development along coastal zones. Bill Doggerty has helped AGD understand how the integration of climate change measures might impact overall policy planning within the Emirate. AGD is creating a geospace-enabled search tool through a local, national and Arabian Peninsular biodiversity assessment. When we started, we didn't have baseline information, we didn't have much knowledge about what was available and what was around in terms of the biodiversity. Thabit al Salam directs Abu Dhabi's marine biodiversity sector. It is in the interest of everybody that we make decisions that are correct, and those decisions that are correct are very much dependent upon the right kind of information. Maps are an effective storytelling tool because uh, you can get so much information in such a, a relatively limited area. The National Geographic Society is helping AGD develop tools that will illustrate the causes and consequences of the Gulf region's water scarcity. And really where National Geographic comes in is we use maps and data that come from the scientific community and tell a story. 
Uh, so we tell a story with those maps to engage and, and let the general population, the decision makers, appreciate the uh, importance of situations. A final effort is assessing the viability of Abu Dhabi's mangroves, seagrass and salt marshes for a groundbreaking blue carbon project. Blue carbon is an exciting new concept in marine conservation that explores how some coastal ecosystems actually naturally help store and sequester carbon, thereby helping to mitigate climate change. Some coastal ecosystems, such as mangroves, actually are quite more effective than terrestrial forests at storing carbon. They store carbon not only in the, in the biomass, in the canopy, but also a lot of it in the sediment and below the surface of the, uh, of the water and below the surface of, of, of the seafloor. Sea Mazdar is a key stakeholder in AGD's blue carbon project. Mazdar can support this project in realizing this carbon reduction or this carbon capture and getting credits, creating money to support this project planting. Beatrix Schmuling runs Mazdar's carbon credits program. The Mazda is an initiative of the Abu Dhabi government with the idea to diversify the economy of the Emirate of Abu Dhabi, looking into renewable energy, we're looking into sustainability opportunities. The Eye on Earth Summit has been AGD's most ambitious endeavor thus far. Convene, converge, collaborate. That's our mantra for Eye on Earth. Eye on Earth brings stakeholders together with the goal of action. We've been overwhelmed by the response. And the reason why I think that is, is on one element, it's a hopeful conference. It's really looking at how we can practically make better decisions for a better tomorrow. Facilitating critical cooperation is a core AGD outcome. That happens when data is shared, forming the foundation for deeper and more meaningful collaboration. Collaboration that AGD believes can change our future. I know uh, more than ever how my life in terms of putting policy together is much easier because of the data, because of the accessibility that I have, that my institution has. If we collect correct data and we do correct analysis, for sure we'll come up with the right decisions. Now people are more aware about the environment. You sit down amongst uh, people in the communities and you listen to them talking about environmental issues. Sustainability is key to our future and our children's future. When you have a more environmentally aware community, that's when they can take action and that's when they can influence others and, and inspire others. Today I'm incredibly proud that the Abu Dhabi Global and Environmental Data Initiative was able to demonstrate success. It was able to demonstrate this success by first acting locally. We hope that we can take this case study and share it with the global community and see how we can take our local experience to the next level.